Greetings explorers and welcome to this beautiful video. I'm here talking today about a book review on Journeys Out of the Body by Robert Allen Monroe. Robert A. Monroe. Now, for those of you who know who Robert Monroe is, he was a pioneer in um, the outer body uh, state. Um, he had no idea what was going on with him. He thought originally they were, he went to doctors because he, he knew that something wasn't quite right, but no one could give him any answers until he had a number of uh, experiences himself. This is his first book written in 1972, I believe. Uh, it's notes of his experiences for the past, um, I don't know how many years it was. Um, he's basically got his journal in here, so I'm having a flip through. It takes a few chapters, chapters until he starts talking about uh, his, some of his experiences, which is noted in like through the years. So um, the 10th of September, 1958. So this is going back 70 odd years now. This is getting quite a, an old uh, book, but still very much in its prime because these experiences are still very much related to now. Um, what he found out the conclusion was that a lot of things that he was experiencing was based upon his fear on uh, exiting his own body. Um, for example, one experience he had was that he came out of his body and realized there was something stuck to his back. There was this being, this, this entity stuck to the back of his body, but it ended up being his own physical body that he was out of his body. And things aren't very concrete like they are here in this physical reality. Very, very different. And um, yeah, so he went through a number of experiences. He is the man who created the Monroe Institute, which is still going today. Uh, 60 years of uh, human exploration in consciousness. And one synchronicity, which I found amazing in this book, which I, I had like 10 pages left in this book. And something told me, my intuition told me, read, read the rest next year. And I ignored it. I just pushed, pushed through that, that, uh, that message that I had. And the ending on page 274, was, which really got me, and I thought, wow, how many years later? So this was written in 1972. Um, so yeah, he says this last paragraph, with the latter comes this probability. In the year 2025, a boy in locale one pushes a button on a device much like a portable radio. I perceive the signal and I turn my attention to him. Hi there, son, he says. I greet him warmly and my great, great grandchild smiles in recognition. And I thought, wow, he's written in here 2025. So it's like a year, That's, this is next year. <laughs> and he's got that right, you know, a boy pushes a button on a device much like a portable radio. He's basically talking about um, a phone, a mobile smartphone, which is pretty much the the you know the highlight of what's going on at the moment everyone's got a smartphone pretty much um yeah and i found that amazing i thought oh my god like i had the intuition to to you know read the rest of this book i have never read this book before i found it many difficult for many years uh reading books um, because of adhd and dyslexia and stuff i found it very difficult but what i found a really good tip out there for people who struggle is reading out loud and that's what I've been doing. So I've been sitting and reading out loud and it's really helped. It's difficult because I start to daydream a lot when I when I read books. And even when I'm, I'm reading, a part of me is talking and reading, but another part of me is daydreaming and, and somewhere else. So I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm doing two things at once sometimes and I have to go back and read out loud back what I've done. So it takes me a long while to read a book. But um, I always wanted to, to read because got tons of books my dad has collected you know he's got hundreds of books on out of body experiences and astral projection and he's got yeah pretty much everything that's out there um, which is amazing um, so I have a whole library of, of books to um, to fulfill <laughs> knowledge on but yeah amazing book it's a bit hard to read because I f I find it's a bit of like an old English um, literature um, which it doesn't flow as well which is a shame um, so 
but you know it's it's never going to go out of date because these experiences that he has um, is is very basic in a sense like he's exploring the locale one as he calls it this local area this this physical reality and he talks about different locales like different dimensions so you have locale one which is this physical world this physical uh, by this physical world and then there's locale two which is pretty much like this but a copy of it but it's a bit different so he he notices where he's he's at so like unlike here in on earth and in the physical world there are there is everything is concrete logical analytical it is what it is but when you start to go out of body things are very different like me coming and having like lucid dreaming experiences and beyond the body experiences in the retreat center here i know the retreat center very well i i worked in the whole of the land and every part of the building but there's sometimes parts of the building that are a bit different or bigger and out of place, like hugely. You'll notice that you come down the drive and it's like, there's a massive building that wasn't there before. People are still meeting up in the roundhouse that I've now taken down and it's still operating there. So on another uh, level of, of vibration, a uh, different dimension as you call it, um, the retreat is pretty much here, but there are beings coming in and out and it's, it's very interesting. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share this book review with you. Um, you know, if you want to learn about out body experiences, it does talk about this in here. It doesn't tell you how to do it, but he talk, talks about these experiences that he is having, um, especially experiences where he's going off middle of the night and exploring because his body is now asleep. In his book, he does talk about how he had his first out body experience and he found himself bumping against a wall which he thought it was next to a fountain and he turned around and he found that he was he thought he had died and he looked down below him and he saw his wife in bed with another man and originally he thought his wife was cheating on him or something and then he he like swam down to his body and like floated down and he got closer to the guy who was in bed and it was him and he thought oh my god i'm, ha I'm having a near-death experience or i'm dead like what is going on very vivid very very visual um i had an experience the the other week where i was be you know beyond my body but i wasn't out of body in the sense of being in the same room as my body i was in a in a different locale like a different dimension which was like a copy of of physical reality but I was in a different bedroom and I was looking at my body and but my face looked distorted and I was like this is odd and I remembered that okay don't get too close to my body otherwise I'm gonna get sucked back into the energy that is there that's pulling me back in so I stepped away and I became excited and lost control and yeah that was the end of that experience so the excitement can completely just destroy the experience within a nanosecond it's it's very strong i don't know what that happens it's almost remaining a bit numb in the experience um which he does talk about in here too um and yeah you know very very interesting so um perhaps i should read you a segment of the book try and find you something from his diary so he unlike england we we write the, the dates very differently. So here he's put 6, 29, 60, which is, I guess, June 29th, um, 1960. So he's written, late evening, this is on page 64. Temperature mid 70s, um, which is Fahrenheit, obviously. Uh, humidity, medium, barometer, average, uh, physically tired, blood flow, surge, came came at a hold off point where before sleep under plan to visit Dr. Andrija and somewhere in California moved blindly for a short period then stopped four people uh, were seated around a table three men and a boy of about 11 obviously uh, not uh, the doctor unless unusual situation I asked where they were what was the location town or state there was no answer to to my query and I sensed weariness and caution on their paths. I asked again and the boy turned and evidently was about to reply when one of the men said, don't tell him, 
Eventually, they were afraid of me for some reason. I apologized for my nervousness and explained I was still new to the non-physical business. Turned and left, not wishing to make them uncomfortable, returned to physical uneventful. Time away was 18 minutes. Um, com comment, no connection with doctor activities at the time as he reports wrong destination again no validation possible why does my presence create such fear question mark this inability to control destination has been and still remains the chief barrier of the production of consistency and repeat repeatability the results of such attempts have brought many intrusions similar to the above and many follow a similar pattern here is one one that brought evidential data although the persons involved were and are unaware of their participation. So he talks again about another experience he had, which was related. So, yeah, different different cover now. It's an updated cover. The other one I had, which is like a blue one, this is more of a modern one, but no edit, just different cover. But yeah, good book, 278 pages. Um, 79 pages and I just I just loved the, the the last part which was you know he talks about the year 2025 and someone having like a portable radio and I was like wow like this is so close like almost to his prediction now I know that Robert Monroe didn't have a biological child with uh, Nancy Penn uh, Honeycutt I know that Nancy Penn his um, Nancy Penn his wife he, he married three or four times, I believe, and his, his last wife, she had, I think, three or four children, and they've had children. So it's not his biological children that are probably interested in this, but it'll be interesting to know in next year if uh, his great-great-grandchild has read this book now. Um, so yeah, good book. Uh, probably haven't explained everything that goes on in here. It's a lot of his journaling. Originally, I think he was having um, a a surgery and he was worried if anything was happened to him so he gave his his diary to someone to, to read if anything was to happen to him and the the guy I can't remember who it was a doctor or somebody else wanted to publish it into a book and I think that's how he became a lot more famous and well known in the pi pioneering pioneering field of out of body experiences and he's the one that termed the out of body experience because he didn't know what to call it but he was very much a businessman I don't believe he is alive anymore. I'm sorry, his spirit is around anymore. He's he's gone. He's dead. He died in 1992. Um, when I went to the Monroe Institute, I wanted the intention to come out of body and to meet Robert Monroe. Um, experience that I had there was very very interesting. When um, I was in the Czech unit, which uh, the Czech is C H E C, it's an anagram for Control Holistic Environment Chamber. It is basically a mattress surrounded by a wall. It's a very small, very tiny room that you sleep in, and you have these audio exercises. You have speakers outside the, the of the the mattress, the head, the pillow, and you can also plug headphones in. And I had an experience where I came out of body, and there was this microphone sticking out of the wall and I was like what's that doing there I pushed it aside got out of the bed and there I saw Nancy Penn and Robert Monroe walking towards me now I don't think that was him completely I think it was an aspect of him that you know he's there or personalities are in the in the area um, talking with people I could have gone back in the past I think well I definitely went back in the past and I saw Robert Monroe and his wife um, clicked out of consciousness, woke back up in the Czech unit, physical reality. The uh, microphone was not there um, next to me. It wasn't there. So I went down into the sharing room after, you know, uh, Robert Monroe and his, his voice had been left on the audio track had brought us back. And I shared with the group and I said to the, facil the facilitators at the time, I said I had this experience where I was in, in my check unit and I woke up and there was this microphone sticking out of the wall and one of the facilitators told me that which room am I in and I said I'm upstairs um, at, the, at the south or whatever and they said oh that was one of the very first check unit rooms they, they, they put in and it was, it's got, it's got a Faraday cage in there and they did have a microphone in there many years ago because the idea was for participants to 
go into the Czech units and to communicate back with Robert Monroe and the other engineers to um, to communicate, but no one ever communicated because people fell asleep. So they took the microphones out and they said that was one of the rooms that had the microphones. And I was like, oh wow, that really confirmed to me that I had gone back in time in the past to, to meet Robert Monroe or an aspect of him, which was a beautiful experience. I didn't have a conversation. I just was in the room with him and um, I most likely went back in time. So it was nice to to read this this book. And another great synchronicity that's happened recently is working with Roxiva. They are now uh, collaborating with the Monroe Institute and it's been great because for 20 years we have been here at the retreat this year and we built this place to be the Monroe Institute in the UK. However, things shifted and we're focusing more on physical mediumship and I do my events here, but um, still the, the spark, the the creation, the idea came from the, the Monroe Institute and the pioneering man that is Robert Monroe and the inspiration from my father, um, who's been an amazing individual in my life to help guide me along this, this path. So I thank you to Robert Monroe, my father, and Monroe Institute for allowing me to uh, experience and explore non-physical realities and understanding what is out there and leaving part of his legacy behind with, with his book, there are free books. I will do a review on the other ones when I get to read them. Um, but hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Listen to me waffle on <laughs> about my experiences. Um, but yeah, keep the experience up yourself. Um, always believe and experience and have your own experiences because that is what is a validation for your own spiritual growth and journey. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you soon.